It's about two powerful men who lose their freedom in the extreme. One is at the mercy of bipolar disorder and has lost his mind and is imprisoned in a chemical straitjacket for the rest of his life. The other man is a very powerful, influential man who has everything, but he's up for murder for the great forbidden love of 30 years ago, and he doesn't even know, did he do it? I wrote Betrayal of Love and Freedom as a novel. I initially tried to write it as an autobiography, and I put a lot of effort into it, and a lot of time and emotion, but it lacked impact. It lacked real feeling. You couldn't feel the pain, the hurt, the horror, the struggle. And I wanted to reach a broad audience because my mind condition of bipolar came from stress. And stress is in everyone's life. When I was in the manager clinic and I kept bumping into everybody, you know, have you been here before? and talking to everybody who've got these tough mind conditions like bipolar, I realised it was like a revolving door. People keep coming back. And I'd say to them, why do you have a relapse? And they'd say, well, in time it breaks through the medication. And they'd all have serious addictions. It could be to recreational drugs. It could be to prescription drugs. Um, it could be alcoholism. And then one day, I spoke to a woman who said to me she was going to have electric shock treatment. I looked in her eyes before she had the treatment. There was hope. She doesn't want to go through this misery anymore. When I interviewed her after having the electric shock treatment, a number of days after, I could see um, her spirit had been extinguished. Everything that she had placed hope on was lost. And that's when I made up my mind. I'm going to fight back. I do not want to go there. And I am not going to give up hope. And I'm going to fight to the death on this. And I am going to search for a cure no matter what it takes. I started off from my journey of life being an office boy. And I tell you what, when you climb to the top and you have a 30,000 square foot home with 16 or 18 bathrooms, a squash court, two indoor pools, an outdoor, two movie theatres, and you've got everything. You can buy anything. The material things don't matter shit. I'm sorry for language, but it don't matter because if you're not really happy in here, what's the point of the bigger home? At this very moment, I haven't got a home. I've got two suitcases, a summer and a winter, and I've never felt better. Up to the day of me losing my mind, I felt I was in quicksand. The more I struggled, the more I went down. I knew I wasn't myself. I was trying to be myself, but something was taking control of me. I knew I was starting to do things I should never be doing. I've never thro taken a phone out of someone's hand and thrown it into a pool. They were in utter shock. I've never given away $100 bills to everyone in a gas station. I've never stripped in a boardroom to my underpants to their horror and to their bewilderment as to what do they do. And to see your whole family feeling powerless to help you and not know what to do and yourself struggling. I want to be myself, but you can't. You're hurting all your loved ones. You know your kids are starting to be a little bit terrified of you because Dad is behaving in a strange way. There's always people telling you, pull yourself together. What's wrong with you? 
you start to realise no matter what medication you take, a lot of doctors don't even know what to do with you. You're totally out of control. My hope is that the reader will reflect for a moment and pause as to where they are in their life, where their life is in terms of stress, and as to how close are they to the edge. I feel my real message is to give people hope that you can obtain peace of mind and contentment to the level you're seeking. Because what a wonderful way to live, always feeling peace of mind. The other important ingredient is the spirit. And what I define by the spirit is that flame of energy, your spirit. You never want to see it distinguished. You never want to go where it's out. And you can see people's pain in their eyes but there's no life there. The lights have gone out. Now I've been there and I've seen lots of people. So you don't want to go there. You want to fight back because you're worth it.